All right, hi everybody. Time of or something here today, and uh, today I'm doing a how to play the trickster video. So as you can see, he is on our screen. He has one of the most bumping soundtracks in the game. We're gonna go ahead and just go look at his power first. Um, he is a projectile killer. He starts with 44 blades. It takes about six of them to do damage to a survivor. Um, this fills up a thing called their laceration meter, which helps you keep track of how many knives you need to hit in order to do damage. You will receive a sound notification before damage is done. And then on top of that, he has a special ability called main event, which basically allows him to throw an unlimited amount of blades at a faster, uh, fire rate, uh, while I, I don't know if he walks faster or not. Um, yeah, his movement speed does not decrease for each throw. Okay. Yeah. I, I had to read over that. Um, however, you will quickly learn that I don't like using this power because it, it, it runs on a time limit if you don't use it. So it's not like something you can hold on to. So I don't really like to depend on it too much. You might see some footage of me using it here and there, but usually when I do, it's me complaining about how I don't like this power, honestly. But yeah, he has these blades that he throws and something that we'll talk about later is when you should and should not use the blades. I've created a little flow chart that I'll put on the screen when we get to that point. However, looking at his perks, we are going to be looking at Starstruck. Whenever you pick up a survivor, anyone within your terror radius will suffer from the exposed status effect. So this uh, deters people from trying to flashlight and pallet save and so on and so forth because they will suffer from being a one hit down after that. Next, we have Hex Crowd Control, which sort of acts like an automatic bamboozle, except it's when the survivors use the window. So the entity blocks a window for 15 seconds after a survivor performs a rushed vault through it. This is a hex, so this can be cleansed, this can be taken away, keep that in mind. This is not just simply a power that you get to have, because that would be kind of crazy, not going to lie. Uh, no way out. Uh, after hooking a survivor for the first time, no way out gains a token. Once the exits have been powered, no way out activates. So, uh, basically this one, uh, you, you stack tokens by hooking people. You can get up to four, which will then give you a 12 second... Um, well, actually, no, wait. You get the 12 seconds of base and then 6 seconds for each additional token you have in your possession. And you can get up to 4. So, that's almost, that's like, what, like 30 seconds worth of block? Uh, that's like half a minute of blocking the exit. So, honestly, that's pretty good. However, I personally do not use any of his perks. I'll be completely honest. And my add-ons variate quite a bit. So, just try to watch what add-ons I use um, in each video. Uh, if I remember correctly, okay, this is the ore revealing one. The, the one that, uh, causes it to spray is a good one. Uh, this cut through you one is also very good. Yeah, th this is the one, the one that causes them to shatter Edge of Revival album. That one's pretty decent too. The Ricochet one can be really fun to play around as well. I usually carry this one just to get those extra blades because 52 be feels better than 44, obviously. Um, so let's get into that flow chart that I made earlier. Um, so let's talk about when you should and shouldn't use your knives real quick before we even get into gameplay. And I'll show some footage, um, here demonstrating each. So to start off, is there a wall you can't see over? If the answer is yes, you should automatically default to the M1. Let them run the loop. Let them drop the pallet because it's going to be very, very difficult for you to get knives off here. Now, is it a long loop? All right, is this, um... Is this like a T wall? Is it like an L wall? You know, what are we looking at here? If it is a long loop, switch to the M1 once again because getting your knives off here is going to be very difficult. If it's not, is it a short loop where there are objects the survivor can hide behind? I'm thinking of like Midwitch with the desk, you know? You can kind of work your way around that or is it like one of the gigantic uh, structures in Midwitch where you can't see around it and you can't throw your knives through it? If the answer is yes... Once again, go for the M1, because more than likely, if you feign your knife and then start making your way towards them, they'll be crouching behind the desk, and that gives you time to break out your M1 and hopefully get a hit there. Now, is it an unsafe pallet? This refers to, I have a video on pallets coming in the future, it's not here yet, but when it is, I'm going to link it in the description so you can refer to that for what an unsafe pallet is. Uh, is it an unsafe pallet? These are generally the pallets that if the survivor drops it and they don't get a stone on you, you're more than likely going to get a hit on them shortly afterwards because the pallet animation wasted enough time that you caught up with them and the pallet did not have a big enough loop for, uh, for you to really be concerned about it. Now, if it is an unsafe pallet, 
I recommend going for an M1 simply because it's quicker. However, if you want to throw your knives here, you can. And then finally, if it's not an unsafe pallet and um, they've thrown it and you've broken it, you can start chasing them around and possibly throw your knives here depending on the circumstance. Now this all depends on maps, obviously. Depends on what kind of maps you're playing on, depends on what kind of survivors you're playing against, so on and so forth. People who don't understand Trickster's power tend to make the mistake of dropping the pallets and giving you basically three free knives that you can hit in the meantime of that animation. Which I will show you in one of the matches here. Um, on the other hand, someone who has played against Trickster is going to know that if they can find walls, they can use those to their advantage. And if they can find a really good loop with some good cover, they can also use that to their advantage. But you also have to keep in mind there are some loops that seem like they're totally safe, and then the reality of the matter is they're actually not once you get down to uh, how they actually work and, and how, how far the knives can reach, what the knives can go through, so on and so forth. So, yeah, that about sums up the beginning section of this video we're going to go ahead and move into some gameplay where i'm going to try to highlight various things about trickster and how he functions and so on and so forth and yeah i will see you at the end of the video to discuss this build that i have here as well as the builds that you're, that you're going to see throughout the video so thank you so much and i don't have lethal pursuers sagittarius Nothing. I have a strong feeling they're going to be up. They're going to be up in here. Oh. Oh, shit. Please drop down in advance. Drop down in advance. Oh, Jake, are you about to be my favorite player? Oh, Jake, you're becoming my favorite player! Thank you for dropping these pallets, Jake. I actually really appreciate it. Where the fuck am I taking you is the question now. Okay. Damn it. Okay. Uh, I'll be completely honest. I haven't really played around Dying Light much. So if you could explain it to me, I can probably give you a, an opinion on it. Or at the very least, I can tell you how I think it sounds like it would work. Go. Go across. Thank you. <laughs> oh. That's why I love this game, dude. Sh little shit like that. I go for the further hook. I know the dying light's a Michael perk. I know that. Someone has repressed alliance. Noted, noted. Who has repre repressed alliance in this bitch? Who the fuck is this? I'm hardly getting to use my power in this map, but I don't really feel like you can, honestly. Hi. Ah, uh, yeah, see, it's kind of tough to use it here.
We're gonna try to ninja drop on these motherfuckers, ready? And we did! Somewhat. Okay, it's the Jake. Hey, Jake. I'm not sure, honestly. I'm really not sure. Maybe. Wait, he was second tier? Am I crazy for... Did y'all know he was second tier? I sure as shit didn't, but Thanatophobia is in effect right now, so that's cool. Oh yeah, Thanatophobia would be really useful with that, I think. Yeah, that sounds like a go-to for me at least. I'll have to try it myself though, I think. Okay, hold on, they're right here. And they're in a bad spot. <laughs> All right, I didn't know that, um, oh. Okay, I thought they ran into basement. I was like, no dude. Very bad idea, dude. Very bad idea. Okay, so this build's actually turning out to be very, very good, I think. Monitor and Abuse is helping me sneak up on people and sort of get the upper hand there. Uh, Thanatophobia is obviously stopping them from doing gins very, very fast. Uh, oh shit, someone's here. It's the Kate. We're going to have a bit of mercy here, just because they're in a shiesty situation. I'm going to try to give the Zarina decisive, and if she doesn't have it, I'll just put her down. Trail of Torment. Hmm. Remind me what that... Is that the one where when you kick the gen, it does the... Oh, shit, dude. Go ahead. I'll give you all a chance. Okay. All right, go. Have I hooked the Elodie? I think I have. Get on there. Oh fuck yeah, we hooked the Elodie. Shit. Alright, let's give the Zarina hatch. You got stuck in a shitey situation here. Let me just refill real quick because I can. The good thing about agitation, you can find hatch much, much, mm -mm. All right, fuck it. You don't want to learn. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I think the problem with Trickster, why I prefer Monitor and Abuse to uh, Trail of Torment is because, oh hey, look, Hatch. Is because, 
Wait, can we do it? Can we do it? Depending on how this game goes, we'll switch to some RP and I'll play Victor tonight. You don't think they're at this really far off gen here, do you? I forgot what my challenge was. <laughs> Ooh, she had borrowed bitchin'. And there she is. I could have told you I was gonna get you there, Chief. Get the saloon gen done. Nothing going on in there. I'm gonna report back this way. Okay, someone got her down. Ash hopped in a locker. Go ahead. Yeah, please do that. Okay. Go ahead. I imagine she had the stun blind challenge, so I was just going to give it to her. on that gin. That means you don't have D-Strike anymore. Damn, I ran out just as I got her. Epic. Yeah, I think I think I am gonna play Victor tonight just because I want him to go see all his old friends and shit. Oh, you're hanging around here. That was wise. I may as well kill you. You got D strike or what? No D strike, Sag did. Fucking Sag. Got there. She is all the way over there. For what I wonder.
What? Okay. I'll give you a hatch. They got scared. Yeah, it was Victor who did this. Oh my. What the fuck? Ugh. Ugh. Oh, I'm like, I'm moving her like with the force. Oh my god. What the fuck? Alright, hatch is open. It's just not fucking here. Okay. They spawn in the main building? Is that what it was? It's like two hatch offerings, and one's spawn in the main building, the other one's spawn in the shack, so. Yeah, it was main building. There it is. Have fun.
Alright, welcome back everybody. Now we're going to break down some of the perks uh, that I like to use. I'm going to break down some of the builds that were used in the videos as well. Uh, starting off here, this build is just kind of uh, what I've been running recently. It's not the be all end all of builds currently. I got Modern Abuse, I've got Shadowborn, I've got Agitation, I've got Lethal Pursuer, all of which are good perks. Um, basically I'm using this to, get rid of my, to lower my terror radius and allows me to get uh, attack uh, knife attacks on people easier without them being aware of my presence yet. Shadowborn is obviously good for a projectile killer because of the field of view increase, you know. Agitation is just kind of a generally good perk to have because I want to get to hooks as fast as I possibly can. Lethal Pursuer is another perk that's just good to have. It's, partic it's particularly good on Trickster to have information as early as possible. Excuse me, in the match. So that you can start working with that. Dark Devotion is another one I've been enjoying a lot on Trickster recently. Um, let me see. And then looking around here, looking at the builds in the videos, we got Modern Abuse and Agitation. Again, Iron Maiden and Thanato. So Iron Maiden allows you to search lockers much faster than you normally would. And as a result, it ends up in Trickster being able to, um, reload his blades a lot faster, uh, by comparison. And then on top of that, we also have Thanatophobia which is another good all-around perk for people just because it simply allows me to um, it allows me to slow down their progress without actually having to do anything directly to them making it easier for me to kind of go around and just focus more on attacking people and that kind of thing um, and then the next build we have okay so this one's a little bit more specific we still got Iron Maiden in here we also have Franklin's uh, we got Ruin 
And we also have barbecue and chili as well. Now, Ruin is, once again, it's another self-serving perk. It's for the purpose of uh, running down uh, the generators without actually having to interact with them. Franklin's was probably there because I probably either saw a flashlight or a key and wanted to get rid of their objects or at least drain them. And then Barbecue and Chili, obviously, is a good information perk for when you're trying to seek out the, uh, what do you call them? The fucking, the survivors, uh, after you hook someone and you just don't have the information right away. Um, so yeah, that kind of, that kind of de defines like the builds I go for with him. It, it kind of variates. He's kind of flexible in that way. The main thing is you want to be able to get information fast. You should have a gen regression perk, which I don't have on this build that I'm showing you at the, this exact moment. But you can kind of play around with him, kind of find like what you like to run. Dark Devotion is something I found out I recently liked, and I've been running a lot less slowdown perks recently to try to focus more on my uh, the one v one aspect of uh, Trickster. So I've been enjoying him that in that way. I think that if you enjoy the other projectile killers, you'll enjoy Trickster just as much. It's just going to take some getting used to because he is different, uh, as every projectile killer is from each other. Huntress is different from Deathslinger. Trickster is different from Huntress, so on and so forth. Trickster has more similarities similarities to Huntress than any other projectile killer, but regardless, he's still really fun to play. So, the, yeah, that's sort of uh, that's where I find myself with Trickster. Let me know if there's anything that I missed or anything any questions you might have about playing him, and I will see you in the next video. So thank you so much, and see you next time. Bye, everybody.